Ladies and gentlemen, I just picked up a Captain America Infinity War and I am feeling epic. Oh yeah. And apart from feeling incredibly cool with myself, just look at these Captain Americas. So we've got the decent one, Captain America. Uh, World War II, I had to remember then. Yeah, he was from that time period. We've got the older one, the kind of the, the runt of the litter up there. Aww, runt of the litter. He's still cute in his own way with his piercing eyes. And obviously we've got more gruffer. We've got the bearded one, the nomad one, if you call it. The Infinity War version, which isn't half bad. Now obviously I have to justify my case of why I decided to put in 13.6 million, even though obviously that I would have had the champion for the content contributors program. I was on holiday at the time. There's no tan, so you can't really see that I was I went on a holiday, but I did. I went on a holiday around the time of the Infinity War release, and at the same time, I didn't have enough time to properly develop and do any videos with this champion. Though, I did kind of like, you know, I think he was alright. I mean, in appearance, he looks okay. But there's much more to this champion than meets the eye. And that is, compared to my Captain America World War II, he has one of the highest block proficiency percentages around. So, as you can see here, 76.3. That is incredibly high. And the real reason I call him a defensive brawler is largely based on those circumstances. He can take damage. He can't really dish out a huge amount of damage. But his longevity and the rate of time that he's actually in the battle is a long ass time, but he is with able to stand a lot of damage from opponents, which is fantastic, especially if you're looking for a good champion, say one of your first champions to go for, that's going to like keep you in the battle a long time. If you're worried about maybe you're playing ability, then this guy will be able to block and also take a limited amount of damage. But that's not the real reason that I wanted him. It's one of many reasons that I wanted to get him and kind of like use a lot of time over my weekend to put in that 13.6 mil. So let's dive into this. Let's begin our exploration of this champion by talking about signature ability. The main way to really explain it is that it's incredibly adaptive against different classes. So Captain America Infinity War has an understanding of the way different classes work and at the same time he understands that he can get positive effects from them as well as kind of dish out negative effects on the enemy and those can be debuff effects. Essentially what you're going to be doing is going from battle to battle with this as maybe a lead champion and you're going to kind of smash the enemy at the same time you're then learning to go against a mutant and then obviously trigger special attack to gain one kinetic potential. And kinetic potential is something that is essential for this champion's damage output as well as aspects of the energy resistance of so many different things that are going to be good for your defensive side of things as well as your attacking side of things. The main thing to really say is if you are with one kinetic potential which is usually just the thing that pings up in blue on the top left hand side then you are theoretically kinetically charged. And that really explains everything in a nutshell with this champion. And as you can see here, these are the positive effects that you get as a result of being kinetically charged with your increased attack, your increased physical resistance, and also your increased energy resistance. It also gives you the aspect to then nullify unstoppable buffs. Man, I love that. There's been so many, like years, I've been playing this game, and it's just like. If you try to nullify that unstoppable, you take an inherent risk when doing it to then get hit back. And like I've had a few times where things have been good and I've able to stop the unstoppable, but at the same time, having a champion that 100% stops that is absolutely beautiful. But that's not just it. Captain America Infinity War also gets to be glancing when he is kinetically charged, which is great because he has this kind of like Ant-Man vibe to him, except obviously people say, you know, Ant-Man as an offensive character? No, but Captain America Infinity War to the rescue because he is just that. And it kind of adds and solidifies the argument about him being a great defensive champion with regards to playing. Not defensive war champion. I mean, like in a case that his block proficiency coupled with obviously reducing down the extent of damage coming in, he is great for being very strong. He's a strong brawler, he's a strong defensive brawler. That's really where I'm kind of like getting to with regards to this justification of who he is and what he will really do for you. One thing I felt as a little bit of a criticism to the champion is that the while heavy attack charging, 
When I was trying to do this, I did feel that it didn't really work with uh, the champion with regards to the time frame. Five seconds does seem like a long time, but at the same time, you can have to play a little bit quickly and kind of work on intercepts. Either way, if you're looking to like do heavy attacks, you have to be very quick, which I don't tend to like that idea. Um, I've also tried like playing about things with the guys like doing a parry whilst kinetically charged and then doing the heavy attack. The problem is when whilst doing it, you then ping the enemy of the other side of uh, of the map and then you have to kind of like get across as you could dash forward as quickly as possible and sometimes that doesn't always work out so i'd probably say like avoid that unless you've got a good kind of routine uh, but if you're looking for a champion that has an increased amount of fury you may look to kind of like add on things with synergies with idol uh, that may be better with regards to increasing attack if you're thinking that this champion doesn't damage out but that much I would probably say that it would be good for Kabam to kind of buff that 5 seconds to 10 seconds just to make it a little bit better for, you know, getting to the enemy, fighting them, kind of like getting your rhythm together. That seems a little bit better. Okay, so here's where the fun comes in, and that is the special attacks. And in particular, this is when the champion becomes a little bit more valuable to you with regards to maybe the opponent you're facing off against. And first of all, oh, yeah, the bleed damage isn't great, but that's fine. That's not what makes it. The second part, which is the most important th part, is if you're kinetically charged, and obviously you just need that one kinetic potential, then you reduce the opponent's defensive ability accuracy by 100% lovely and that can be incredibly helpful especially if you're going up against really annoying champions that have defensive accuracy you know so many pesky champions have things that just make you go oh do you know what that, that thing with that regen that evade that stuff is a, is a frustrating so yeah if you can do that and, and use the l1 with a kinetic potential bit of being kinetically charged obviously then it's going to be incredibly helpful moving on to the sp2 and obviously it continues in the same way in that first of all 100 percent chance to stun for one second not particularly amazing however though this improves when each kinetic potential charge grants plus 574 attack and 0.50 seconds stun duration now if you have five charges up and if my math serves me well which i really hope it does that means your stun goes up to 3.5 seconds which is great next thing that improves is the amount of attack kind of boost because that is great and that goes up to 2870 so plus 2870 that is quite tasty and i think at times i'm looking at uh, anything between about 25k around that with regards to damage output on an L2 with five charges, which isn't too difficult to build up to. If you're going up against certain champions that projectile fire, then that can be incredibly helpful. You absorb that based on a block, and then you're hitting out with the L2 with five charges. Mwah! It's tasty. It's not as tasty as Proxima Midnight's, but you have to do less work to get to a damage output that's reasonably high. And yeah, sometimes you have to get lucky with regards to critting, so that's on a crit. It's not a kind of a current thing, so it may be anything between about 8 to 15k as a basic kind of non-critted attack. But still, I enjoy the damage. I know that a lot of people may kind of like quibble at that and go, oh, well, that's not so much. Well, it's not too bad, to be honest, and like I said, this guy's defensive abilities uh, and strength based on block proficiency and, and the kind of the glancing aspect makes him incredibly useful for you. The L3 is good, but it isn't brilliant. So, if kinetically charged, gain plus 1148 attack for each different class on cap steam not including himself up to two classes. So, it's not a huge kind of boost to that. It would be nice if that was a lot bigger but that's just how it goes. The way that I played this champion was based on the L2, but obviously the great thing about this is you gain one non-consumable kinetic potential charge, which lasts 30 seconds and can obviously go quite well. It's kind of like have that up, build up to an L2, smash in an L2 with five charges up. I don't know, I found that it just took a long time and in that time I could have done a done a, like one L2, build up and do another. And it just seemed to kind of a better process to do that as well because you get the stun I enjoyed that a lot more, so that's how I played it. I'm all about kind of boosting through onto the L2 with five kinetic potential and kind of like smashing home a good amount with stun so I can then just start just hitting into the enemy quite quickly. With regards to synergy bonuses, there's a few hit and misses with this. I like the idea and I will be playing about with 
Iron Man, in particular with regards to like tech champions, drain 100% of the opponent's max power after the opponent uses a special attack. This really implies that what you can do with Iron Man is you can build him up or build the enemy up. Say, like, you know, you can brawl up to some maybe uh, close to an L2, and then uh, as soon as they've done the L2, that they then drain up that, or kind of like same same thing applies. It's obviously, as soon as they've done a the special, they then drain power. That's pretty cool. It does mean that effectively the enemies got to start from scratch with regards to building power if they had extra or reserves. And can be quite handy for, say, going up against Hyperion. Uh, because obviously we all know how frustrating he is with regards to the center power gain. And I'm not saying that obviously he will, you, you should leave him going up to L3. But maybe, you know, that's an option there. And obviously that is class disadvantage. So may, maybe that may not be a good uh, solution to that. The mutant evolution stuff, like the prowess side of things, I would have preferred to seeing like Bishop in that. I know that doesn't really work for anything, but, you know, Kabam's logic and stuff. Uh, when it comes to the skill side of things, uh, increased critical rating on basic attack. I experimented a bit with Black Widow, saw no great improvement with it. But again, like I may not be looking for it, like it may not be there quite as pr predominantly as maybe it should be. But that's just my thoughts. I just didn't see uh, an extensive improvement to that. Uh, science experiment science champions place a passive weakness on the opponent reducing their attack by 50 percent except while being struck by them um again like good but it's not something that again i'm going like oh this is this is amazing this improves a lot of these champions a lot more mystic champions deal 30 percent of their attack as direct damage to their opponent when nullifying one of their buffs i like this this can add a little bit extra to say scarlet witch who obviously is pretty darn cool and i'm quite interested to then do some work with uh the thanos with this particular mystic craft synergy because it can add a little bit extra to it however though there's one synergy grouping which i like the most and can couple with a, a, a you know cosmic supremacy so we're talking like maybe cosmic supremacy and then we're looking at cosmic power so Cosmic Champions increase their buff duration by plus 25%, added on to Cosmic Supremacy. I think we're going to see, like, for me, having Captain Marvel as a lead champion, and then kind of added on an increased amount of, say, Fury being on, can really mean for a huge amount of damage output. So I'm going to look to experiment with this in the future, so expect a couple of videos about these kind of synergies. Either way, I like the way they're so diverse with regards to what champions they bring in and what kind of inclusion they have based on kind of like either improving damage output, nullifying effects, so many different things, really darn cool. Final thing to really say about Captain America Infinity War is he's a really good champion. A lot of the champions that are putting out nowadays have a lot of significant improvements to say uh, these reskins effectively because that, that's essentially what they are. I know a lot of people will kind of scream out about like, you know, oh, well, why can't you go back and do old champions? And I do agree they should go back and do a lot of old champions. But the new champions they're putting out do see to take, take this change away and kind of improvement side of things when it, you know, comes to like going up against more difficult content. And they have to really kind of balance that. You wouldn't take a champion that uh, was released back a long time ago in to do a lot of the content now. It just seems like a thing. I mean, there's a few champions that you would still take, but it doesn't seem to be like you would go back and go, right, well, uh, I'm going to take my Iron Patriot in against stuff, uh, the content that is now. It's it's just things have changed a lot since then. Either way, really ha like I said, really happy with this champion. I've explained all the things that make him really good for me. I think it's a very good learning champion, especially if you want to take less damage and deliver a good amount of damage back, especially when it comes to kinetic potential, burn them up to five, smashing in the L2, nullifying those unstoppables, beautiful. There's a lot of other things that, I've, as I've said, make this champion so much fun, um, but I'll let you experiment and kind of see if you want to have that champion in the future. I want to just let anybody know, this was not part of the content contributor program. I grinded out 13.6 million for this champion it's mine this is mine my champion no one's taking it away from me so that has been the video i've been rich man if you enjoyed the video hit that like button and subscribe for more marvel contest of champions based content and as always i shall catch you on the flip side Bye bye for now